we are back. We're back. Episode 34. Oh. That was recorded two hours after, after episode 33. In the same clothes, same room, same mm. lighting. We're just not wearing shoes this time. Right. I'm wearing slippers. I'm wearing my slides with socks. <laughs> and a lot has happened. A, a whole lot has happened. Holy crap has a lot happened. Yeah. Um, We edited your vlog. Right. By we, I mean I edited yes. your vlog. Uh, uh, what did you think about it? Um, Minus that 15 minutes. Forget yeah, about that. The rest of it was really good. Yeah. That that almost 30 minutes of you being completely ripped on the back porch and like trying to process thoughts and Google and shit while you were recording yourself was not entertaining to me. No? <laughs> not even a little bit. Okay. <laughs> well, what did you enjoy about uh, it? Other people may enjoy that. Um, that was that was almost to the level of you on concentrate. I don't know if it was because you had slept and like you just woke up and went right into the No, I tried a new I had to I stopped it halfway through and I was like, oh, no, I can't do these when one go. Yeah, that explains a lot. Yeah, you were pretty baked. Yeah. Yep. And like, though, that's very funny to me and comical, especially when we're watching TV, because mm. we're watching TV and you're like that. It's fucking prime comedy for me. Yeah. Um, I don't think that people want to watch you sit out there Googling shit on your phone. So I think they might. They might. I, I could be. I think Danish wrong. is going to be obsessed with this. Well, yeah, because she's going to be out there baked too, watching, going, "No shit, Pangea, really?" Right. <laughs> you definitely will have a small group of of people who will match that level of. We should Google this. Yeah, yeah. That's the that's the little community that I kind of crave. Yeah. We just do stupid shit together. And you just need more stoner friends. Is that what you're saying? Maybe. I might. That's how I decompress. Yeah. Getting stone and just thinking about shit I don't know. I wonder how much of that AJ is going to have to bleep. Huh. Because we didn't refer to it as medicated. You're right. We didn't. So, yes, a lot has happened. We edited yeah. the vlog. Well, what, did, or, well, what did you think of the other stuff? Um, I mean, it was... Your, your plant thing was pretty cool. The peace lily thing or whatever it's called that you found was pretty neat. Yeah. Oh, so what that is, I actually found out what that is. What is it? That is to repollinate the plant. To get more seeds. So it's not a peace lily. It's not. I had no idea what that was. And then someone said, hey, think of this. And then unlocked all of the information I knew about it. I knew exactly what it was when someone said it. So should you put it outside for the pollinators to do their thing? No. So I can actually do it. Um, I think I need more than just that one to do it, though. Like I need one that's already ready with the pollen to go. And then there's a certain window, like the prime time to pollinate. I just don't think it's ready for either of those things. Hmm. Yeah. How dope would it have been if we had to set it outside and all those little pollinators did their thing and those plants grew all over our property? I know that we would need two of them because you just explained that, but still that well, would be Well, I mean, gangster. could they do it with other things? I don't and know. little bees just came over and rubbed their butts on it? Do you think something would happen? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> That's how it happens, right? Yeah, I guess. I know that they carry pollen from thing to thing. Yeah. Yeah. And they're hefty boys. Yeah, some of them are. Wiggling around in there. Yeah. That's how it happens. Get your crew thing. Get your crew thing. Okay, okay. Uh, so we did that, and then we I got the the episode thirty three, the true episode thirty three edited, mm -hmm. which was the easiest video ep edit that I've done since we stopped the first like three episodes. Yeah. Do you remember when we would record, and I would just put a side by side, yeah, and let it play, and mm -hmm. I didn't have to do shit. Man, those were the days. <laughs> <laughs> this was almost that good. Yeah. I just deleted all of the cameras except for that one and let it run because this camera didn't record. Is it recording? It now? is. I, I moved the screen so that Smart. I can see. Um, this camera didn't record and having this camera perfectly in focus on me and then trying to use that camera to make you bigger because I zoomed in to try to fake it yeah. made you super blurry. Oh, man. And like going from me to you, from me to you, I'm tack sharp. You're kind of out of focus like... Because, you you know, Zoom. Mm -hmm. uh, so I just deleted all those other ones and ran episode 33 with just that one film or one camera film. I'm not old. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when you were like, hey, Nick's third camera angle? Yeah, I'm so glad we didn't do that. Um, so I, I've decided we are definitely going to need another camera. Um, I ordered another C-stand. Mm -hmm. And I ordered two wall mounts that have a... 48 or 50 52 i think they were 52 i think i think they're 52 i don't think i bought the 48 ones but they have 52 or a 48 inch boom arm that i could put a ball head on so that i can mount the cameras to the wall to remove the tripods so you only have to watch your head versus watching your head and your feet as you're walking through here dope um 
don't like that. But I bought two of them. Okay. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to mount mm. one above that camera at a higher angle and over some so it gives us a slightly different angle and then one over here or the smart move would be to put one of each above us yeah aimed at the couch so that way when we have people here we can just put the cameras on the tri on those boom arms mm -hmm. and and angle them at the couch and go from there i don't know yet i bought them they'll be here we'll figure that out when everything comes because it's like tetris okay but <clears throat> i'm excited to see how it happens me too because i have no idea what i'm doing mm -hmm. I've learned, I learned that semaglutide affects the way that your uh, GI processes the food you eat mm -hmm. and it slows down how long food is actually in your system. And I am really glad I didn't rush the dosage of that because I was going to just be like, Let's they go. said to take 2.5 or, or 0.25. I'm going to take 0.5 because fuck it. I'm so glad that I didn't. So glad that I didn't because I, I did point. Three, two, uh, 0.32.5 because they said to do for way mine's dosed yeah. the doctor told me to do one unit i did a unit and a half mm. yeah and i'm supposed to do another unit <laughs> and a half tomorrow and weigh the, the shelf life is on that right i'd had a very rough week next week if i did because boy let me tell you i will say that i am very impressed with how i'm not hungry yeah like i haven't even last night eat lunch when mm -hmm. we stopped recording and ordered lunch, I just ate the meat and a little bit of the rice. I threw almost my entire meal in the trash. Me too. And I didn't even eat the same well, time you did. That's because yours was still left out, right? You're, what? Why did you not eat yours? Because I was on the phone with my sister. Oh, so stress. <laughs> right, because you left yours sitting on the table. Like, it was probably cold by the time you ate it. It was already cold. It was avocado sushi. Oh, well, there you go. So it wasn't because of semaglutide. Oh, no, I'm not taking anything. Right. I was talking about the fact that I don't have an appetite because of the, the semaglutide. Oh, I was just saying, like, yeah, I didn't eat my food either. <laughs> Yay, club. <laughs> Twinning. <laughs> Same Z. <laughs> I joke like that all the time, and he's like, no. You're doing it. That's because you do that when we're wearing the same shirt, and I don't want to be that couple. Just once. You know... I think that by the time this episode comes out, the his and her shirts will be dropping that weekend. Ooh, and you said you were comfortable wearing those shirts together. Yeah, because they're not the same shirt. Mm -hmm. It's a couple's shirt, mm -hmm. though. It is, it is a couple's shirt. I love it because we did couple's jammies and you hated it. Yeah. <laughs> but you did it because it made me happy. I did do it because it made you happy. I, I'm, willing to, I'm willing to bet... I'm willing to bet that there's going to be a shirt release probably the weekend after this drops. Okay. It's going to be, just in case it's that weekend, um, I was thinking about doing it on a Sunday again because I liked being able to just do the shirts on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. uh, I was thinking of doing August 13th, which is a Sunday. Strong possibility. If it, this airs before August 13th, know that we're having a t-shirt drop this weekend. <laughs> Hell yeah. Yep. His and her shirts. I'm so excited about that. I, I'm actually excited about those two. I, I, I like what they stand for, I think, mm -hmm. because it is just print on a T-shirt. Like, it's just font. It's not like we have crazy graphic design going on on them, right. but the fucking statement is there. So, and I, I think the shirt after that that we're going to do, or maybe like a supplemental shirt, I want to do the Burn the Ship shirt. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people wanting those shirts. So, we'll see. And maybe do like a small, small drop of those. How small? A hundred shirts or less, just oh, to tiny. Yeah, uh, I was gonna say that this is going to be another episode like thirty three. So if you if you enjoyed episode thirty three, you're in for another one because we are doing the exact same thing. Hell yeah! We are reading update emails. Mm -hmm. You want to get into it? Sure. Hi, Chris and Peaches. Firstly, can I say a huge thank you for all the content you put out? <laughs> It's going to be absolutely abysmal if I get to the word and fuck it up again. <laughs> it's inspiring and helpful and allows for real consideration and implementation. Good job. Into life and relationships. <laughs> <sighs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> I was so nervous. <laughs> <laughs> the pressure. The pressure of fucking the word up twice. Myself and my man now have in place a written relationship agreement that we have both had input in. And he took the lead on starting this after me telling him about you guys. It's so helpful to have in black and white what we both want and require. 
to be able to physically pick it up and to be able to remind ourselves, if needed, what we want from each other and our relationship. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. And it's also real hard to say, I didn't know that. Oh, uh, that's yeah. that's what you meant? I don't remember that conversation. What are you talking about? Mm. We also ensure we have daily check-ins with each other. Sometimes it really isn't much of a check-in, but we need to really talk. But when we really need to talk, giving ourselves the space to do this has really helped. Our communication is at an all-time high, and even though we have always had good communication, things have improved exponentially. Don't get me wrong, we have our off days, but have always agreed that we will never go to sleep angry with each other, and so far over the last 12 months since starting this journey, you've led us on, we've had this more right than not. We've got this more right than not. That means they've been a fan since TikTok. That's crazy. Yep. Wild. It has been a year on TikTok. Mm -hmm. I, I know that it's been a year because that night that that booty meet mm. where I shook your butt on TikTok. Yeah, showed up. It, it showed up the other day. Yep. You're so fucking hot, it's stupid. <laughs> uh, it puts me on cloud nine when you refer to me as anything to you. <laughs> Why is that? Uh, the ownership? I just hold you in such high esteem. And I think that you are someone who holds other people in their life to a high regard. High standard. A high standard. Yeah. I do. Mm, makes me feel good. Not going to let people be in my life and not be what I, what I believe they're capable of being. Yeah. I don't want nobody holding mm. me back. And I know what I see in you. And I know other women see in you what I see in you. And it's just like, <laughs> it's mine. <laughs> I landed that by myself. This mentally ill female did the work, upgraded, leveled up, and now I get to call him daddy. <laughs> I love my life. Yeah. <laughs> You're looking at me and I'm getting nervous. <laughs> On the outside, I look like this. On the inside... I am fainting on a grand staircase super slowly in my very elegant robe with feathers on the sleeves. <laughs> Back to the email. Both having both become from new what? What did I? I'm, I was so nervous about things. I don't even know where I'm at right now. All right, twelve months of a journey. We've got this more right than not. Fantastic. Having both come from numerous really vile relationships. But at last, having one that is real, honest, peaceful, and safe is the most rewarding and comforting place to be. We were best friends before we got together. Now we feel like we can beat whatever comes our way together as a healthy and strong unit. So again, thank you both. Keep doing what you're doing. You have saved so many relationships and are helping to put solid foundations there for new ones too. Why are you looking at me like that? Because I can. <laughs> <laughs> That did it. <laughs> oh my God. My arm oh, crying. <laughs> what the fuck did I just experience? I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is my life. And you get to watch me live my life. <laughs> All right, next email. Anything okay. you want to... Nope, that was a short one. Hello, y'all. Uh, not saying names. My husband and I have been married almost four years and together for five. We have two kids, a three-year-old boy and a seven-month-old girl. God had y'all pop up on my TikTok FYP at the most perfect time. We hear that a lot. Yeah, right? Like timing? Mm-hmm. My husband and I were at the worst part of our relationship and divorce was just going, oh fuck, was just around the corner. I have such a hard time with that word. Divorce. Yeah. <laughs> Side my thing. Divorce. <laughs> we were going all about, we were going. Mm. You are going through it over there. A, a lot has happened for me today and... I just had an experience I've never experienced before. And I, yeah, I'm going through a lot. Yeah, <laughs> It's a lot happening. 
We were going about marriage all wrong. We were not communicating properly. My part was I would keep all my feelings on till I exploded and I would say hurtful things to him and yell. It came from childhood trauma for my egg donor and always fighting with her having to protect myself and my sister. My husband never fully trusted me even though he thought he did. He always had to depend on himself and no one else from a very, very young age. An abusive relationship before we met did not help him, did not help him at all. The week before y'all popped up, popped up on my TikTok, we were at rock bottom. I was tired of him telling his mom about our entire relationship. Ooh. It's a no-no. That's such a problem. Oh, no, no, no. Not in my house. Mm -mm. Due to my childhood trauma, I felt like she showed some characteristics as my egg donor and had a wall up. I felt there was a lot of games played and the info my husband kept giving her did not help. I had enough of it and told him we need to set boundaries. You guys and I both know I didn't say it's that simple or sweet since I mentioned earlier. Both know I didn't say it that simple or sweet. Right. I was an aggressive yeller during conversation. My husband gave me the reaction any person would when, yell when someone yells at them and talks down to them. We fought for a week and his mom was helping him get a divorce lawyer. Behind the scenes, I did not know. How do you and your mom know you're planning a divorce, but the person you're married to doesn't? Because sometimes people want to get things in order before those discussions are had. Yeah. Do you think that it was just the mom egging it on? I, I think that there's a very strong possibility that dude was miserable as fuck telling his mom about it. And the mom was like, well, what do you want to do? Yeah. And he's like, I need money for a divorce. You know what I mean? Or, or whatever. I need okay. help. Whatever. Postpartum anxiety and depression did not help me with did not help me with the situation at all. The first video I saw of y'all, it was Peaches talking about being a good wife and how men think. I was very interested in what Peaches had to say, so I went to y'all's YouTube where I watched about eight, uh, where I watched about nine or ten videos. It opened my eyes, and for the first time in our whole marriage, I sat down and had a calm conversation with my husband. I bet that was a shock to his system. Yeah, I'm sure it was. Sure it was. I'm very curious how that conversation looked. Right. Because it, unless, it, I mean, it, obviously it worked because their relationship is great, but I hope it started with an apology. Yeah. I know in y'all's podcast, y'all suggest no distractions during conversations, but I let him play his game for our first calm conversation. I think that was a good call. Yeah. It can be, like I said, it can be very shocking for somebody's system. And a sudden drastic change like that when you are used to chaos is a red flag. Yeah, I agree with that. I'm sure that had he, uh, yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure there there could have been a whole lot of, why are you saying this? Right. Like, did she find out about the divorce? Like, you know or what I mean? What's like, happening? Right. Mm -hmm. We talked about our marriage and how we don't want it to end. We talked about the boundaries with his mom and how our family comes first. I come first. I promised him I would work on myself if he could work on himself. It's been five or six months now and we both changed for the better, even his mom. He has opened up slowly talking to me about everything. I no longer yell during conversations or say hurtful things. When I start getting upset, I tell him I need to make I need to take a breather for a second because I don't want to say anything hurtful to the man I love, which I learned from y'all. That's hard. That's mm -hmm. a very hard transition to make from blowing up and always being the screamer and the mm -hmm. like instigator to being able to like take a deep breath. I just need a minute. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hard, a hard transition. Yeah. I'm more into my feminine side and have never felt better physically or mentally. My husband feels the same. I am a stay at home mom till August when I start teaching again. Little things like picking up his dirty clothes off the floor, pushing in his chair when he forgets to, which is all the time. Closing the shower curtain after his showers and more. It doesn't bother me at all. It actually makes me happy to do these things for my husband. I'm going to pause you. Okay. Th those are things that bother you and not him. Right. Or would have bothered you and not him. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like being that it no longer bothers you and that you're happy to do those things, at the root of that, you are doing it for you more than you are for him because these are things that are a you issue. Right. If he wanted it done, he would do it. Right. So accepting that this is a you issue and be just being okay with doing it has probably saved you a whole lot of fucking headache. Mm-hmm. When people realize that, like those issues are a you issue. It doesn't affect your partner. Right. And you blowing up and making it an issue to your partner is where the issue, be it's where it becomes an actual fucking problem. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of people who don't close their shower curtain. 
Right. I, I know a lot of people who don't close their shower curtain because they're afraid somebody could be hiding in their shower. I'm that person sometimes. Yeah. I never have to go skydiving because you already take the wind out of my lungs. Oh, <laughs> all the cheese, all fucking, the cheese. Can't fucking breathe. <laughs> I don't even remember what you said. Oh my God. I feel like I was trying to make a point. Do you remember what we, what we were talking about? Mm, nope. You know what's stupid? How much of a distraction you are to me. I really live my life by my husband's got me. <laughs> <laughs> wow. I love you. I love you too. He works hard to provide for our family. He has started working. He has started working hard to keep our relationship alive while working hard and being the best father. We still have our downs, but our downs aren't crazy anymore. My husband has always been an amazing partner and dad. He just had some things to work on and he didn't know how to. And with the way I was acting, it wasn't helping him. Since finding y'all's podcast, we are better than ever and he truly is my best friend. Y'all truly saved my marriage and my life. Chris and Peaches, y'all are truly godsend. Thank you. I don't think that we did anything other than made you realize that you had shortcomings. There really is a time for everyone where they go, okay, what I'm doing is not working. Right. There's got to be a better way. We are literally just providing people with the, hey, hey, there's an easier way to do this. Look this way. Yeah. Yeah. There's a much easier way to do this. And yeah. when they realize it and that things change for them, they, they accredit it to us. We just pointed out your shit. Mm -hmm. Like. Held up a mirror. Yeah. Yeah. But you got to be willing to see it. Yeah. Take the accountability. So I do this thing maybe once or twice a week where I take like five to ten minutes and I just look at myself in the mirror. And like, I don't like look at myself like I, I look into my own fucking eyes because these are the eyes that other people look into. And like, I don't know, I really just have a moment with my with myself and I remind myself that you're a being that people perceive and have memories of. And everything that you do is going to have a ripple effect in other people's lives. And I remind myself who I am and. Give yourself a little pep talks. And smack my own ass, yeah. Good game. <laughs> I, th I don't think that happens enough for people. Yeah, I don't think anybody does that. Very rarely do people do that shit. I, I don't think people ever do that, yeah. So much in my mind. Okay, next email. Yeah. Okay. My partner and I have two young boys, and we have been watching your content exclusively and implementing your exact values and beliefs in our own lives. And boy, oh boy. Our entire lives and relationship has taken a major turn for the best. We have forgiven each other and let go of all resentment. We are communicating so much better and we have chosen a whole new level of parenting. I am the sole provider and she is a stay-at-home mom. I never imagined in a million years this is what would be the game changer in our lives. Thank you both so much from the bottom of our hearts and please never stop being Chris and Peaches and please accept this gratitude. Y'all are amazing and a living inspiration. Mm -hmm. I wonder how much stress it eliminated from their lives when they decided that she would be a stay at home. I would imagine a lot. Right. You know what I mean? Because it comes down to the financial stability. If you can afford to do that, mm -hmm. there's a benefit that comes all around. You know what I mean? Like all across the board. If you look at it purely on like a, the housework that needs to get done. When you go from 40 hours a week at a job to 40 hours a week at home, mm -hmm. it's a lot easier to get your fucking housework done. It definitely is a lot easier to get housework done. So that eliminates that level of stress. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> which will obviously in turn eliminate other levels of stress. And I don't feel as suffocated. Yeah. Next. Sure. Hello, Chris and Peaches. My name is, hmm, and I'm 25 years old. I used to be married and have been single ever since she cheated on me while I was deployed back in 2019. When I found your TikTok channel, I decided to give the podcast a try and I thoroughly enjoyed listening to you guys talk and joke around with each other. I feel as if your podcast has helped me in many ways, even though I am single. I have started accepting the person that I am and acknowledging my faults. By doing this, I am able to better myself for a future relationship. I understand that I am a young and I understand that I am young and have made some dumb decisions in my life. But looking back on them, I am able to work through past traumas and gain insight 
from things that you guys have dealt with. I've been consistently working on bettering myself through listening to the podcast to utilize your given advice, therapy for my trauma, college for my bachelor's degree in business, and working on my fitness to commission as an officer in the Air Force. Love all of that. Holy shit, right? You have a process. That's a lot of goals. This is a lot of goals, but he's young. Right, and they're all achievable. Now is the time to do that shit. Mm -hmm. The only thing that he didn't list on that that I I think you should look into is to get into our, our book list. Yeah. Because our recommended reading list has a lot of dope shit on it that would very much benefit everything that you're trying to do. Mm-hmm. I'm here for all of that. Yep. I don't know if this person is currently looking or maybe testing the waters to see what dating's like. Do not suppress or lower your goals for somebody else because you just want the interaction. Yeah, no shit. You have some very amazing life changing, life achieving goals. Don't give up on that. Yeah. Yeah. Find somebody that wants you to level up. Mm -hmm. These are just some of the things that I am doing to better myself alongside picking up some new hobbies to meet people and build my communication skills. In my next serious relationship, I will implement many of the communication techniques that I have learned from your podcast to help progress the relationship and our knowledge of each other. I'm curious which ones he's going to implement. What like specifically like what have what were the big takeaways? You know what I mean? Because like there are things that you hear. For for example, there are things that I hear when I read my audiobooks mm-hmm. that will stand out to me. I'm like, bro, what the fuck? And I'll have to play it back. I'm like, yo, that was the golden nugget. Like that was the piece of information that I needed from this book, right? So like, I wonder if people get that from our podcast where we'll say something and they'll pause it and be like, no way, and then go back and then play it again and be like, yo, that's that's it for me. Like. Mm-hmm. I wonder if that's a thing for people. Yeah, I think it is. Definitely. Be cool to know what those were. In the beginning of the podcast, I remember listening to Chris speaking about what a man should do to keep a woman safe and what makes him a valuable man and what makes a man valuable. Mm -hmm. I already grew up doing most of those things almost by instinct, but it's nice to hear that I am doing things right. This is a gentleman video probably. I think so. Yeah. I also remember Peaches... I also remember listening to Peach's talk about what makes a woman valuable, and which gave me things to look for when finding a woman who has value, but more than that, finding someone who is highly compatible with myself. It's important. Let's go. Yeah. Don't fucking settle. I am here for this. This is, this is why we preach the courting thing so much. Mm-hmm. When you know your self-worth, you're not going to settle for less. Yep. Set those standards. Write those expectations down. Mm-hmm. Pro- Keep it in a little notebook. Yeah, pros and cons list. Pull that bitch out of the dinner table and be like, mm-hmm. okay, let's have some conversation and start yeah. fucking marking that shit off while you're talking to him. Yeah. What is that? This is a pros and cons list. Why do you have a pros and cons list? Because I got to be honest, I've wasted a lot of time in my young life and I just want to make sure that we're not going to waste any. So as we talk tonight, I'm going to be checking boxes and see where we fall. And if you get less than a 90, we're just going to be friends. Yeah. I'll buy your dinner and we'll go about our life. <laughs> I, I would pull out a notebook and I'd make like little jokey jokes about it, right? Like I'd be dramatic, pull out my glasses and put it on and make the person comfortable and say, like, okay. And be like, well, what's that? I'd be like, don't worry about it. Where do you see yourself in about five years? <laughs> Children? No, me too. All right. That's nice. Good to know. Are you doing anything next Tuesday? No, that's not on the list. I'm just asking. <laughs> do you think I would nail a date with you? Uh, maybe. I mean, you landed me. I, I would imagine. <laughs> I would imagine that that you'd do all right. Yeah. Yep. What? You are fucking going through it over there. I am. Um, yeah. What? What? What made you say that? Because I I can see your body language. What about my body language? Really, the shimmy, the eye closed, the lip bite, the licking the lips, the the deep breath with your eyes closed. <laughs> recognize all that happened yeah no it did every bit of it <laughs> that mm. you are not going to be a very good poker player because your tells are going to be very obvious this is different from poker is it i'm a poker oh. <laughs> <laughs> what was that ah what was that it's me you're gonna me <laughs> oh 
man. We are so stupid. I thought about the poker thing extensively, and I decided I'm going to need contacts because I don't want my glasses to carry a reflection of the cards in my hand. Yeah, you're good. Okay. Keep your cards on the table. Put your hands over them. You look at them. You leave them on the table. Why did you make that face? You have twos and a four. Because it's not a good hand. What else? What other face would I make? We should start watching the World Series of Poker. I feel as if the content that you bring to all the people that would listen, that listen to the podcast, have taken away something very valuable. I personally want to say I appreciate everything that you guys do on a daily basis to bring us content to listen to and learn from. I like to say that I strive to be better for myself and my future girlfriend or wife. I hope you continue to put out content that helps others as much as it helped me. I love what you guys do, and I hope you continue to be happy, successful, and united. We are around that motherfucking corner. The, the happiness with the podcast was the thing that was lacking the most. I agree. And we're doing the thing. I definitely feel like we are at a turning point. I am feeling a lot better about a lot of things in life. Same. And the evolution's happening. It is. And it's weird that we felt it coming before it did. Mm-hmm. A lot of trials to get to this point. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there was a lot. I mean, you can look at the schedule and see that. Mm-hmm. The amount of times that we've changed the schedule trying to find that right, like, to keep it, the momentum going for us and, like, not being able to do 50 fucking live streams a week has been kind of nice. Yeah. Not having to record all week and edit all week is kind of nice. Mm-hmm. Like, we're in, in I, I don't know, like, I'm getting efficient with the editing. I'm not having to clip the way that I was, so I'm not in front of the computer all the time, like. I'm back at the shop a little bit more. There's just a lot of things that have happened over the last, I want to say, two weeks. That is just, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm very optimistic. Me too. You want to do another one? I mean, we're we've got like 30 minutes of content with all the shit that I've kind of cut out of this. So yes. What are we at? 50 minutes. Uh, So this one's directed at you. Oh, Chris. Okie dokie. Your TikTok asking for new content was the first thing on my page for. On my For You page this morning. I'm not sure how to really start this for you guys. And I hope this is what you are looking for. I won't trauma dump. I understand how draining that is for both of you. Love that. But I do have to say, and to be honest, I don't watch or listen to the podcast. But your TikToks from it have helped me in more ways than I can express. Especially the more serious I get in my relationship. Love the honesty. But bro, you need to listen to the podcast. Yeah. Or lady. Whatever you are, I don't know. I believe it's a lady. You, you should be listening to the podcast. Mm-hmm. For for everybody that listens to our TikToks, you guys get a very small yeah. segment of a very large conversation. And some of that shit's taken out of context intentionally. Right. You're, you're really missing out by not listening to the podcast. Even if you just listen on Spotify while you're at work. Mm-hmm. Like, you should be listening to the full content. Um, so I'm going to address this because it's bothering me. I always correct it when people say Peaches and Chris. I correct it to Chris and Peaches. Mm-hmm. Um, it bothers me that only one of us got addressed in this email. So I am going to correct it. It it should say Chris and Peaches. This is even. Can you read it again though? Why? Because he addressed, she, he or she, they. Your TikTok asking for new content was the first thing on my For You page this morning. Right. Which is why they were addressing me because I made the call to action on my TikTok page. Is that's how I heard it? Am right, I right? But they're in that? emailing to us. Okay, they're thanking us. So if you're going to address us, I would appreciate being included in the address. Okay, I view it as a respect thing. Yeah, and I always correct the respect. Um, the cr- I always correct out of respect for you, and I'm going to hold myself in that same respect. Watching you both, how you both care and love, and most importantly, respect one another. Before what I have to say now was something I longed for and hoped yet not believing I'd have because. Before, what I have now was something I longed for and hoped, yet not believing I'd have because I didn't believe I was one of the girls or anyone worth it. Also, I didn't have the skills, guidance, or knowledge to not be what I know now is toxic and learn defense mechanisms and trauma responses until I really started listening and wanting to be with the man I have now. You were right. If she is still trying to unlearn all of those things, the YouTube contents where it's at, the mm-hmm. podcast. Yep. And, and here's another thought too. Hmm. If, if they are, TikTok is a cesspool. It really is. I, I really do not enjoy being on that app. And every time I get on that app, I find myself scrolling. Mm-hmm. 45 minutes to an hour goes by. Yeah. Every fucking time. That 35 minutes to an hour that you spend on TikTok every day could get you through content, real content. 
Like you could be doing something with your life other than scrolling TikTok that could be benefiting you. Right. Instead of just getting 15 seconds of helpful information. Right. And if you see a two or three minute clip and you're like, damn, that was that was fire. Like, Mm -hmm. just go watch the fucking content. Right. Close TikTok. Go to YouTube. Mm -hmm. Find our channel and actually just watch the podcast. For the first time in my life, I was a toxic one and didn't know how to process the way he treats me. He looks at me the same way you look at peaches. I started working on being better not only for him, but for me. I also have BPD. I just couldn't be in my masculine energy while going through life, knowing the triggers and everything that comes with my mental problems, but avoiding anything that would take me out of my comfort zones and stability. Hearing you speak on how to handle that in your marriage has really helped me be able to communicate effectively and not push him away, as well as show me that I can have a love and respect like you two have. Once we got past the first hurdle in our relationship, I needed to know, I needed to now work on me even more. Being better isn't just learning once and being fine. Hearing how Peaches talks to you, the words she uses gives me a role model on what I wanted to use to communicate with him to be more feminine and vulnerable so he could have the place to himself and the man he is. Her talking about taking her boots off and all of the things she does and the joy That was something I want to experience. The first time I brought him food or did something to help him while he was doing gave me a sense of pride and joy. It not only did that for me, but changed things in my relationship too. He had a new appreciation for me, more than he already did. It allowed for him to grow and let down some walls and vulnerability as well. Then came the first time I took off a man's boots after he worked all day and was dead tired. It's a new thing for me now, taking care of him like that. And the way he was at peace and how he slept right after, that sealed it. That while she might get hate for the things she says, I applaud her for saying it. Because without those words, the inspiration for how to be in this relationship, I wouldn't have what I have now. I wouldn't have ever thought to take a a man's boots off and be the things I am now. Or what to say when I am not in a mental place that's respectful and healthy. The peace and calm I've grown to learn inspired by you both has not only helped me be better... But my man and everyone around me, while I challenge them using things from you guys. Say that again. The peace and calm I've grown to learn inspired by both of you has not only helped me be better, but my man and everyone around me while I challenge them using things from you guys. While she challenges them. Mm -hmm. Okay. It's crazy to think how much of effect we're having on people's lives. Isn't it? It's really crazy. Yep. You know, before being in a relationship with you, I would have never thought to take a man's boots off. No. Mm -mm. Never crossed my mind. Do you think that that's because it's it it's just frowned upon? Like it's just like why would I do that? He's a grown man; he can do it himself. Like, that's the mindset. I I could definitely attribute that mindset to it. Yeah, I also didn't see anybody as worthy of it. Hmm. That's a good word, worthy. Yeah, I know what I am. I know what I bring to the table. I know what I look like. Being able to experience this, taking boots off. Yeah, you have to be something special. <laughs> and wink. And wink. <laughs> did I do it? Did I wink? You didn't. I mean, you did, but it was. It's so hard for me to do it. Usually I just blink. <laughs> <laughs> it's like you had to talk yourself up to it. Yeah, and without wink. the narration, it's very hard. Yeah. <laughs> you can see me say it in my mind. Yeah. Yeah, you want to see? <laughs> <laughs> Your eyebrows came up first. It was choreographed. (laughs) Told you. Oh, man. I love that she's challenging people in her life with this information, too. Like, she's not backing down from things anymore. Right. That's rediscovering a new self-worth. That's dope. What does it say about the people around you when you're having the the happiness and the success in your relationship that you're having and you Mm -hmm. still have to challenge the thought process of others? Instead of people just being like, damn, they got a dope fucking relationship. What do they know that I don't know? Yeah, I'm cutting people out of my life for that shit. Like, you don't want to root me on and right. be supportive and genuinely happy for me? I'm good. Yep. I just want to say thank you, and please keep doing what you're doing. It's touching more lives than you know. I hope this is what you can use as content. I appreciate the realness and honesty from both of you. I'm loving these emails. Yeah, I am too. This is so dope. It, it It's nice to know that like the months of nonsense that we've gone through and like the trauma dumping and all the shit that we've had to experience has been 
there's actually been work going on behind the scenes. Right. It's worth it to people. Like people are genuinely finding value in all of that shit. So, so like it makes, it makes all that hardship that we went through with a lot of it. And like the emotional, like stress that we felt worthwhile. Mm -hmm. Like, I feel like I just got a paycheck. Like I got an emotional paycheck, like oh yeah, a mental high five from somebody. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's dope. You want to do another one? Uh, we'll do one more. I, I just, I don't know how much of this I have to cut out. And like, we just hit an hour. Okay. Hey, Chris and Peaches, I hope you both are doing well. We are both 23 years old, and I have been a stay-at-home mom or wife for the past four years, and he works full-time. We wanted to send you guys a thank you slash follow-up email. I sent an email to you guys at the end of February. We were entering the seven-year itch, and you guys actually answered it twice. In a Patreon-exclusive video and in episode 18. Not complaining because not only did your first response give us a starting point for growth together, but it helped my husband make the decision to start taking accountability and accepting where his faults are. I think I remember that email and I think I remember going, we, we covered this. Fuck it. Let's cover it again and see if it's going to be different. I think so, too. I, yeah. I, I do. like That's familiar to my brain. Mm -hmm. I hope she says if anything changed. Yeah. Like, what, did any of our answers change? I mean, now I need. Yeah. Right. I don't fucking know. <laughs> by the time well when you think about it the time between recording thought processes have changed we right. had new information yeah by the time episode 18 had come out we had already improved so much that your second response solidified for us that we are in this for the long haul i fucking love that that's so dope since getting y'all's responses we have been more intentional with our time together and have been more present we have set new boundaries on our phone usage in the evenings having intimate conversations after the kids go to bed we watch one of y'all's videos a night together. Like a night out of the week? Yeah, probably just one, one a yeah. week. Maybe maybe they'd, they'd like watch the podcast mm -hmm. together. That's crazy. The seven year itch is so scary to me. Yeah. yeah. It's a very real thing to a lot of people. We were supposed to talk about that the other night. Were we? Yeah, but that was in the Adam 22 thing that we did for Patreon. Mm, yeah, that's right. So, but that, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, don't, I don't think that's going to be a concern for us. We're, I, hope not. I, I really don't. I don't. I, I don't foresee that being a thing. Our communication is so clear that we don't let our needs become neglected. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. and I, I think that's what a lot of that comes down to. The intimacy starts to fade because people get complacent. Right. You get tired. You get stressed. Life happens. You become maybe sex gets boring for you. Whatever the case may be. But we. That's not a thing. Like. Thank you for that reassurance. You're welcome. Even if we've already watched it, we always take something new away from it. Y'all should really be we watching things. Yeah. A mm -hmm. lot of people do. When the kids were little, I had them watching like baby Einsteins. And it's just baby shit, like a duck for four seconds, and then it'll switch to a very colorful thing to have their eyes, and it's playing classical music. And then I would say like every minute maybe would switch to a new scene. And I'm rewatching this thing. And I'm like, that scene wasn't there three, three times like ago that we watched this. Right. Is that a new fucking scene? Is a baby smarter than me? What's happening right now? We do small check-ins every night before bed. And every morning we ask each other, how can I love you today? I've surrendered completely to him after being in the, I don't need anybody mindset for what feels like forever. He has thrived since I surrendered to him. He is getting his dominance back and it has really helped me get back into my feminine. We started going to the gym together for quality time. And as Chris says, your physical health correlates with your mental health. Yes, it fucking does. I have been, I have seen so much improvement with how he is with the kids since we started working on us. Our life has improved so much since finding you guys. I'm curious what their gym time looks like. Yeah. Right. Because you see a lot of couples go to the gym and the dudes go to the free weights and the women work to the machines and like, or they'll go into like the little yoga area mm -hmm. because they don't feel like they belong in the free weight area or they, they treat their bodies like, I don't want to get too bulky, even yeah. though you're not going to get too bulky, no matter how hard you fucking try. Mm -hmm. I'm curious if that's created a new level of intimacy for them. I bet it has. We owe you guys everything because if I hadn't found you guys on TikTok, I would have probably given up on my marriage. So thank you. They were teen lovers. They're both 23. And they were at the seven year itch when they found us. Oh, yeah. So they're high school sweethearts. Mm -hmm. Oh, and they had their kids young. Mm -hmm. Look at that. Saving families before they even fall apart. That's the shit I like reading. You want to keep going? Are you okay with that? Uh, we're at 105. Like, I, I don't even think we're going to hit an hour. I'm just, I don't want to put out a podcast that's shorter than an hour and a half. If we can get it to an hour and a half on the monitor, 
and it cuts down to an hour, fuck it. It's a short episode. But I would like to at least have it read one thirty on the thing. Okay. Are there a lot of those stills? You want to do like a regular email? Um, We have 10 of them in here now. 10 left? Mm-hmm. You want to do a regular email? We can do a regular email. Okay. That way it's just one. All that feel good stuff leading us up to hype us up to the help we are going to give. All right. Uh, then let's let's call it a night and then we'll come back to episode 34. Okay. And do something another time. Okay. All right, guys. So we sat down to record a, another email because we were at around an hour and 30 minutes on the previous podcast. May, I actually think it might have been 45 minutes. I don't remember what 34 was. It was very short. It was. And we wanted to try to make it a full length episode between an hour and a half to two hours. And because we're not really sure where it went, we decided to open some stuff and not read the other email. So we opened some mail. We obviously have a description of it. We talk things through, but this is better viewed on our YouTube channel. So if you are watch or listening, if you were listening mm-hmm. to this on any podcast streaming service and you want to see what we're doing, go to go to YouTube to be better on YouTube. Find our channel. This is episode 34 and you can watch Peaches open all this cool shit we just got pretty dope and then uh if this is if the, if you are listening on a podcast you don't have to finish this podcast because mm-hmm. it is just us talking at that point that's not email related but you could still get a feel for it i mean we were pretty descriptive in what we were looking at yeah although you're not going to get to see her try to eat a soap it was so tempting it was i saw that <laughs> <laughs> and you'll only know what i just did if you went to the youtube channel yeah yeah you guys should be subscribed on our youtube anyways Okay, guys, so we're back. Episode 34 is in effect. We uh, have made changes. It's been like six days since we recorded the first half of this. I don't even know where we're at right now. We have moved some chairs around in here. We got rid of the couch, which you can't see. Um, I am in my flip-flops, for those of you who catch the third camera. If you see the monkey toes, just kind of ignore it. We're in our house. It's been a long three days, um, and today's an entire day of recording. And Damn it, I'm going to be comfortable while we're doing it. So. Hey, we got, a, we got a package in the mail. Do you want to open that before we get into the oh, email? Oh, yeah, we should do that. Because I'm really curious what's in the I'll get it. I totally forgot about that. I, Holy you, shit. I remember we got- so we got, a wedding, we got a wedding invitation, too. We did. We received a wedding invitation. You guys and- are going to fuck around and send these wedding invitations. And one of these times, we're going to happen to be in the area of your wedding, and we're going to wedding crash your shit. We are. We're going to pop up. Yep. No, we're not expecting food or anything. You know. No, we- I, I expect food. Oh, but we oh, got yeah. RSVP. It, yeah. I'm not going to. It's a, it's a wedding crash, babe. Oh, that's the point of crashing the wedding. Yeah, Yeah, I'm going to show up with a t-shirt cannon full of confetti. (laughs) Are we going to white trash it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, wife beater and dickies. Okay, so I'm going to need curlers. I'm going to need curlers. I'm going to need a light blue bandana. (laughs) I'm going to need very bright pink lipstick. And I'm going to need also a wife beater tank top, but I'm going to knot it right underneath my titties. Nice. (laughs) Maybe cut off shorts. Jorts? Ooh, no. You, I need to get Bra- like... You and Brandon can match because he's wearing those jean cut off shorts, the jorts. Oh, we can both wear our pink Crocs. <laughs> yes, I'm on board. I feel like there needs to be like three day old glitter somewhere too. Not on you though. Yeah, I'd appreciate that. Okay. So there's a lot in here. Okay. There's a, a little letter. Oh, this is a very long letter. Let's start with that. Okay. So this said, Chris and Peaches, there is so much I could say, but what I'm ultimately going to be trying to say is thank you. You opened my eyes to my toxic behavior and helped me relearn how to be a good partner and human. You taught me the importance of accountability, and I am so thankful for the both of you. I am marrying a good man, good in all caps and underlined. So this isn't a wedding invitation. Um, This is a thank you card. Uh, meant to be. Join us for the wedding. Okay. It, it's It's a wedding invitation. Okay. And I am so glad I finally know how to treat him right and appreciate him properly thanks to you. I want to invite you to our big day because I wouldn't be here without you. I know you guys probably cannot come all the way to Missouri, but I still want to extend the invite. I look forward to continuing to grow with the use of your content. Thank you both for being amazing. Yours truly. P.S. I give permission to use my name if you decide to share. Oh, well, her name is Haley. Okay. Love that little note. I, I save all the little notes. Yeah, well, we save all the, the wedding stuff anyways. Yeah, we do. Um, it, it means a lot to me. Right? It, it, me too, yeah. Me too. It really means a lot. Uh, smart QR code for the registry. Love that. Love that. Um, we should we should buy something off the registry I was form. about to say, guys, if you want to just include your registry, we might not be able to attend, but we might be able to surprise you with something. Yeah, yeah that, that would be dope. Um. So this is... Just letting you guys know when to be there. What was the date? When is it? 
It is um, Sunday, October 8th. Oh, and there's a photo of them. That's that's so sweet. I love I love you guys are happy. And it is in Missouri. Where oh. where in Missouri? Are you gonna cut it? I just need the city. Um Marionville. Okay. Marionville. Mario Enville. <laughs> um, there's a potluck reception. Pulled pork, buns, and barbecue sauce. Oh man. Please bring one side dish per household to go with our main dish meat. Oh, so you we really could just be like, sweet potato salad. Yeah. Here we are. <laughs> That's funny. Love that. Makes it easy just in case. Yes. I love that your invitation was bee themed. Yeah. Yes. I am I am very much on like a bee kick right now. I don't know what it is. Well, bees um, are special to us anyways. They are. So I want I still want to get that queen bee underneath my throat. Yeah. What is this under my chin? This is my throat. That is under your chin, yes. I want to get under my chin. With hum- honeycomb. Yeah. Oh man, I, I'm so glad I don't have to do that tattoo. And I was straight thinking straight lines. Yeah. Like perfectly straight geometrical lines on that part of the body is going to suck to have to tattoo that. Jeff is amazing. I well, I, I, no I've doubt. got full faith in him. I'm <laughs> yeah. glad it's not me doing it. Yeah. So, I would be stressed out doing that shit. Guys, keep sending the wedding invitations. Please. This is something I am going to I'm gonna save every single one. Yeah. I'm gonna save every single one and it's gonna go somewhere. We should and make a photo album of them. That's a good idea. Yep. And I promise you guys, one day our kids are going to be able to look through this photo album and like look at all the lives that we've touched. And how wild would that be? Oh, I'm so excited for it. Yeah, we are doing some shit. That's heavy. Oh, that is very heavy. My back. <laughs> I'm old. <laughs> Big old box. And I ripped the label off for their address. Ours is on there, but it's the PO box, so it doesn't matter. Before we get into this, I am so fucking mad at the Discord right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was very random. <laughs> it is very random. And they're going to watch this and know exactly what I'm talking about because I'm sitting here having a really good time. And you want to know the elevator music that's going on in my mind right now? What? F-R-E-E, that spells free, creditreport.com, baby. <laughs> I'm glad that that's no longer a thing because Why? we would have just advertised them for free. Oh, really? <laughs> They're not a thing anymore? I, I don't think they are. At least the ads aren't a thing anymore. But then again, I also haven't watched TV in forever, so I don't know. You gonna read it out loud? Um. Okay, I'm just a little taken aside because there's some bold letters and one of the first things that caught my, high, my eye was biggest organ. Uh-oh. Oh, and that's not what your brain read? And I was like, no, it says biggest organ. I was okay. like, is there skin in this box? <laughs> 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 you were right. What's in the box? <laughs> David, it seems that envy is my son. No, oh, what's in the box? Not till you give me the what's gun. in the fucking box? Give me the gun. <laughs> so at Be Still Eden, we strive to provide not just holistic products in the most natural state, but custom for your skin and needs as possible. Box soap stores. <sighs> oh, I know what this is. Right, me too. Okay. Box, store, soaps, shampoo, conditioner, even household cleaners are meant for mass production. We have a rising at alarming rates, might I add, of allergies particular in- to particular ingredients since additives in our world, meaning many have to deep dive, earning a Google degree in ways they should not have to. Um, I agree with that. I have been doing a lot of research on the household products that we use. And... Like making our own toothpaste is becoming very appealing to me. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Making our own laundry detergent and shit. I know starting it is going to be a very costly thing to do, but maintaining it's not going to be. So it's just going to be that. Am I willing to dedicate myself once a week to making these things for the household and bringing you a number of. Hey, babe, we're going all natural. I need $2,000. I'm just saying that in the event that you actually started making soap, I could live my long lifelong dream of being Tyler Durden. Soap. Sorry. I make and I sell soap. The yardstick of civilization. And this is how I met Tyler Durden. Faber Street Soap Company. I want to make soap. Yeah, I I, I was... That was a, uh, you want to call it that? No, I don't know if we could call it that. I'm sure there's copyrights in place, but 
If we did make a to be better soap, I would absolutely want a men's line soap that smells like leather and tobacco. And like, I, 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 if you were good at making soap, like if you got good at it, obviously the first few would just be samples to send to people right. as you learned how to do this shit. But that I, it would absolutely could be a side business for you while I'm working on the consulting thing. Absolutely could. Anyways. Okay. I'm going to start looking into that. Men are oblivious to the health and care of their biggest organ. Okay, brain in the gutter. Let's scoop you out now. We are skin. We are not oblivious. We just don't care. I was about to say, you are very obvious. Not obvious. You are very aware of your skin care and whatnot. Mm -hmm. It is very much of a, fuck, I forgot to do that today. I'll just do it in the morning. Leaving the scalp itchy. Back skin tight and often needing scratches too. And the rest of the skin feeling no better. Women are treated no better, being often told they must spend upwards of $100 a month for the perfect skin. Really? You women spend spend their money on some wild shit. Women spend $100 on shit just for perfect skin? I know women who spend five, dollars $600 on their hair every two months. Be surprised. Women really... That's why when you're like, I just cut my own hair, I'm like, what? What the fuck you mean you cut your own hair? You're not going to go to the hair salon you know, every other month and be like, hey... Were you hey, really taken aback by that? Wow. Yeah. Was that like a, a well, pleasant when surprise? I was, when you? I was like, maybe you should go get your nails and feet done. You're like, oh, I can do that. I was like, what do you mean you can do that? Yes. Yes, you can fucking do that. <laughs> like, I don't want your hands to feel like mine. And if your right. feet happen to be resting on my chest while you're folded in half, I don't want them to feel like 7-Eleven feet. Right. I want them to feel soft and feminine. I'm the one that needs to feel rough and calloused. I need a second. <laughs> because your hands are certainly rough and calloused and my throat is going through something right now. The fuck were we talking about? Soap. <laughs> <laughs> Men's skincare. And hair. Oh, yeah. And I read that women spend a hundred dollars right. a month on skincare products. That's I don't spend a hundred dollars on skincare products. Mm-mm. People are constantly complimenting my skin and all of these other things. You talk about how soft my skin is. I spend <laughs> what? Well, at one point while we were on mushrooms, I spent like 45 minutes complimenting your skin. So, yeah, yeah, your skin. Oh, it being was much longer is, than that. Sh- no, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, are we L- downplaying L- it? Yes, big time downplaying it. I would say it was maybe 30 minutes. Okay, yeah, it was, yeah, it was not a long time. No. But it, it was. <laughs> if you want to know the real number, it was probably about three hours. <sighs> so, I was, I was able to, I was cognitive of time at that point. And um, you definitely did spend about three hours just, wow. Owen Wilson. <laughs> wow. Um, I love that you love my skin. Yeah, you're supposed to be soft and, and mm. dainty for me. Do you feel I succeed at that? Yes. Do you feel I go above and beyond in that? Well, I mean, it works because your bath time, like your three hour long baths have all your shit in it that makes your skin super it soft. Does. And That's the trick, guys. I spend maybe $100 every three months on skincare products. It's, it's because all it all happens shit. in the bath. Yep. Um. Do you feel like go above and beyond in that? I think you take care of your skin. Yeah. I really do try to like, I look for new products and try to find super non-ingredient things. You want me to hurry up and get through this box? No, I was, <laughs> I couldn't remember if I pressed record. Okay. Um, I just want to make sure that the effort that I'm putting in is being seen, I guess. Cause if, if I, if you didn't view it as me going above and beyond, then I have to try harder. <laughs> I am very much that person who wants to, in reality, p- be putting in the energy that I think I'm putting in. So to treat your body the way nature intended, seek out skincare for you and buy you with Be Still Eden's help. We won't ever use in our products paraben sulfates, lactic salts, artificial preservatives, additives that contain any amount or processed with toxins and heavy metals, regardless of what the FDA deems as safe. We also steer clear of use of plastics and glues in packaging. Okay. I love all of this. Yeah. Yeah. So it's organic packaging. Biodegradable um, shit. I'm going to have to ask her about palm oil. Uh, we use glass, paper, and hemp in all of our patching, packaging, aside from the occasional BPA-free caps on smaller glass bottles and droppers, which have gone through sanitation and recycling. Paper used is 100% recyclable, and the beeswax used in packaging is post-recycled. We also send recipes on homemade household cleaners and DIY home tricks and tips upon request. Keep it real. Keep it well. Be still, Mrs. B. Nelson. 
So there's also a code. If you use to be better when you shop with them, it's 10 or 15% off. Um, but we actually don't even know what anything is in this. They just said they were going to send us a package of stuff. Also, we are big proponents of small business. So if oh, you are really a small are. business, this is a free way to get your shit to a platform because we're not getting paid for this. This is also a very good way to get long-term customers out of us. Right. Because if your product's good, we're going to support you. Right. I am always looking for healthier, more organic, natural alternatives to things in life, especially with our kids. Right. So if I can find like a shampoo that's better for their hair or a lotion for their skin because they're very sensitive... I mean, fuck, if you want to send me something, I will start purchasing from you if yeah. it's if, if, if I think it's if worth like it. it. Right. Yeah. So what do we got? So uh, let's see here. There's a little piece of paper here. Oh, look at that. There are some business cards. So business is called Be Still Eden. It is on the card says Brittany Jean Nelson. You can email her at be still Eden Flora, F-L-O-R-A at gmail.com. Okay. And Eden is spelled E-D-E-N. Like the Garden of Eden. Yes. So if anything on here catches your eye, reach out to her. Yep. All right. Oh, so this is a note from her. Dear Kristen Peaches, salutations from my humble shop in Washington State. I love supporting USA-owned business men and women. So one of our objectives at Be Still Eden is to source as much local as possible from the PNW or on our motherland. PNW. Pacific Northwest. Pacific Northwest. Which is a beautiful country, and it would, it would be amazing if it wasn't such a shithole politically. I have done a lot of deep dives into, for example, like the drugs that are like the drug situation happening mm -hmm. over there on the West Coast. Fucking horrifying. Yeah, yeah there's oh, a lot. Oh, if you guys have not looked into that yet, look into that. Portland, yeah. Oregon, right now. Yeah. Fuck. It's like dystopian shit. Some of the contents we use are sourced outside of the United States of America, such as our French green clay or our black Brazilian clay and our red Aztec clay. You guys have clays? I love clay. Put that shit on my, fa my face and relax in the bath. Well, there could be some in that box. I would love that. What's in the box? <laughs> I've stopped buying clays from stores because I don't like... I've just noticed like the bigger corporations that sell clays. I don't like, I don't know if it's the texture of it or the way it feels on my face <clears> or the <throat> additives that they put into it, or I'm just buying the wrong shit. It's got to be something that they put into it. The whole point is to maximize profits. And Which, it's sh shelf life too of things. Right. The more that we get into like breaking down things like the pop tarts, the more I'm uncomfortable with the things that have become normalized in America. I fucking love pop tarts. Oh God, they're so Oh, the s'mores one. Yeah, for me, it's the, what is it? The cinnamon and brown sugar. Aww. Man, so good. Can I get a whole oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I wonder how many people did that with us. Shoppers, can I get a fucking... All essential food? oils. Oh, yeah. Okay, go oh, ahead. Yeah. I have the button. <laughs> it's still on there. I love that. All essential oils and fragrance oils are sourced from Bellingham, Washington. All rendered animal fats are sourced from local farms and butcher shops. Love that. Me too. Many of the herbs used are grown in the private garden. All ingredients are sourced responsibly and are tested regularly. Quality is key. I'm imagining her now with like a little basket on her arm and there's this massive gate covered in ivy and it creaks as she opens it and there's just this massive gardens of things and she was like, yes, today is the day I'm going to create something new. <laughs> I'm here for it. It's probably not ex that <laughs> no. extravagant, but one day it could be. It could be, and yeah. that would be amazing. As far as the notes of fragrance slash essential oils used in this package, they blend perfectly together to craft what I like to call the honeymoon package. Okay. As many clients I've had have wanted to treat newlyweds or are a spouse shopping to use products on an adventure together. If this doesn't make me want to smash, you failed. I'm just saying. You, you've now set a standard by calling this the honeymoon package. That's what I'm envisioning. Like, yeah. <laughs> you know that we could, that we could probably take some of this shit to Vegas with us. Oh my God. Could you imagine the bath I could have in Vegas? That tub is pretty dope. I didn't get a bullshit suite. Like I, I spent just as much. Anyways. Do you want to film something in Vegas? What are you trying to like, like some, some spicy something stuff? Something for you. <laughs> a little something for you. We will have. back pocket. Anyways. Next. <laughs> I might have went a little overboard with products. 
but wanted truly to give that pampered experience to you both as you work hard and deserve it more than most. Love that. Thank you. <laughs> like my bath time really is, I'm starting to get emotional. My bath time really is my don't fucking talk to me. Yeah. Like you come in and you have your little moments and you just watch, <laughs> you observe and soak in what you have worked for in your lifetime. Yeah. I like to think you've earned me. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, talk about talk about knowing your self worth. <laughs> like when I'm in the bath, though, the kids aren't coming in there and bothering no, me. No. Mommy is off duty. Yep. Like, yep. so my bath time—that is also the time that I take for myself, where I am not in my mental state. I'm I'm doing absolutely nothing besides whatever the fuck I get enjoyment out of in that moment. If I'm listening to a book, if I'm watching a podcast, so my bath time is very much my me time. So having somebody just for free send us all of this because they appreciate what we've done really means a lot to yeah. me it really does and i'm gonna start crying so i'm just gonna keep reading it's easy to forget as an observer a viewer of art and content that those people we admire or enjoy are humans there it is every episode she's gotta cry at least once good job Brittany. <laughs> if that's even her name i don't remember what she said her name was so she said so with that in joy, there are items I have made specifically for you guys with ideas you have given me, having no name. If you like that product and you want it to be recreated, name it for me. I keep a record of all of what I make. If you have friends or family that want it, naming it would help me recreate it. Okay. So <laughs> why don't we do this then? Instead of you start making soap, why don't we try to find a way to like partner with somebody like this? Okay. Create our products. They already know the shit. And I can just tell her what scents and shit I want. Right. How many times have you heard me say, if I can pay somebody to do something that's going to do it better than me, I will. Right. I'm not saying you can't do soap as a hobby. I will support that 100%. If you want to do soap, I'll spend five grand right now and buy you everything that you want to make soap. Right. But. I, I No, I think it would be dope to pair with somebody like this in like once a month. Peaches from the To Be Better podcast featured right. in a shop or whatever. Or, order a big ass fucking thing of it and just sell it on our website we buy it from her at cost or wholesale mm -hmm. upcharge like and then the we ingredients sell it. that i need no or so so let's say let's say we come to an agreement right okay with with whoever this is mm -hmm. and and we're like i want to do her name is Brittany. i want to do five loaves of peaches baby batter <laughs> i meant to say bats butter <laughs> peaches bath butter baby batter that i need a minute <laughs> <laughs> oh my god what's wrong with my brain i was trying to be slick and say something on the fly and be like peaches bath butter <laughs> instead of a bath bomb because that's already a thing no right? bath butter is a good idea yeah right so we we say that we want to buy five five cases of that yeah they're gonna brand it with her brand mm -hmm. And then the to be better formula of whatever we tell her, we yeah. buy it from her at a discounted rate to buy a quantity of it. Right. She makes it and then we put it on the the website and then upsell it. And she gets a distribution of profits or? She, no, she'll get what we pay for it. Oh, But we she'll get a mass order. Right. She'll okay. get a mass order, but her brand will be on what we're buying. Right. And then so, we sell it. Right. And then if they want other products that are not the peaches line, they have to go to her website to buy it. That's smart. Right. It's just marketing, babe. Okay. This, that, that's why I was so like adamant about wanting to get on board with Matrix. I have so many fucking ideas with those guys. Okay. Um, I have. So I've actually looked into making soaps and whatnot a few years ago. And I've looked into making bath bombs and body scrubs and oils and all these other shit tinctures. So you realize that we have a room out there that you could do that in. I, I do know that. Okay. Um, we even have sterile air in that room. Right. Really? Yeah. I did. That not was my that. laboratory for a while. Um, I don't know. I, I do want to make soaps and I don't want it to be my full time job. I don't have the time for that. Right. So I love that idea of reaching out to her and doing that thing. I would love to make soaps once a month and like as a hobby, as a hobby, when you and, want to. Right. Yeah. Yep. You I give like it as that. Christmas gifts and right. like, right. Discord gifts. Hey guys, thanks for being a member of Discord. I made five things of to be better with a B thing and it's yellow pollen looking soap. Like, you know what I mean? Like so many things that you could do with that. I wish I lived closer to her. Yeah. Or Why? we lived closer to her. Why? Because this would be somebody that I could go on a Saturday with and be like, okay, this is what we're going to do. You know, you have your business. We have our business. This is what we're going to do together. We could also just fly to Washington. And make a trip out of it and write all of it off on our taxes. 
because it's a business trip now. Okay. Uh, obviously, okay. there's conversations that right, would need no. to be had in that. But my brain's just fucking going now. If that's an option, this is for how us, my brain works twenty four seven. It's why we, I'm always involved in other people's shit. If we can fly somewhere once once a month, we could. We could. I could be doing soaps. I could be making candles. Yep. Fuck, dude. Yep. <clears throat> it obviously would be, it would be more workload because we got that other thing going on right. once a month too. But like. It, it, it's not it's not unreasonable to do that i'm gonna once, be honest once every two months and like just have a list of shit we got to go over right and as the kids get older i'm not even worried about that as they get older and we look into homeschooling they come with us they can just travel with us right it'd be and a, when a lesson in economics and when they're 16 17 years old they can start looking into all right guys now you're gonna fucking be a part of this yep there's actually um i saw on tiktok like a year and a half ago that there is a family who does homeschooling that wanted to teach the kids about pollination mm -hmm. and they did. And the kids were so about pollinating that they then wanted to start keeping bees and the parents wow. allowed it to happen. These kids are now nine to 12 years old and they have their own online business at nine and 12 years old, making and selling products based off the beeswax because of what they learned as, as they were learning about pollinators. And it's all based off of homeschooling. These kids are turning a fucking profit at nine and 12 nine years old. Nine and 12 years old. Right. Because they're homeschooled, not government ran indoctrinated. That's amazing. Yep. I have goosebumps. Yep. I have goosebumps. Whew. Good for those parents. Yeah, no shit. Good for those fucking parents. And that's a series of choices in life. They set themselves up so much for success that their kids, their minor children under the age of 15 are making a profit. Right. Insane. And I felt the need to specify under 15 because I feel at 15, you're kind of starting to become aware of shit and you're more yeah. inclined to be able to handle the money of things. Yep. All right. So now we're just going to dig into this little box before we keep going. I have to feel, I feel the need to tell you this. Once I get my mental shit figured out, I feel as if I'm going to be able to start unlocking doors for myself and to venture into other things. And I really want to have my hands in a lot of things the way that you do, just not in the things that you do. Cause I don't have interest in the things you do. That's fine. I don't want you, I, I don't want to be involved like that. I like that we can sit down and brainstorm together, right. but I, I, if you start doing something, I would consult if you need me, but I don't okay. want to be involved in that shit either. So okay. any hobby that you want to turn into a business or anything that you want to do and actually do that, I'm, I will support you in a hundred percent. Okay. And, and like I said, I'll consult and I can help guide you. But like, I want you to do those things. I want you to thrive and have your shit. Like, I don't, if I, anyways, it's what we talked about before we started right. podcasting. It was the conversation that we had that I've already started. But anyways. Okay. So this says, um, so she has listed about six or seven things here. And it says a balm. So skin nourishing balm to replenish skin moisture, treat dry skin, remove dirt and grease. Overall can be the multi-tool of skincare made with turmeric for anti-aging, anti-inflammatory, and known to reverse hyperpigmentation and improve skin tone. Fur needle for antifungal, antimicrobial features. Mixture of cocoa, coconut, tallow, beeswax, lavender, rose oils, and butters. It's turmeric. Turmeric. What did I say? Turmeric. Turmeric? Turmeric. I take that. I, I, I take that. Like, it's one of my supplements. I could be saying it wrong too. Oh. Fuck it. Just call it what you want to call it. I, I don't just... even remember what I called it. The orange spice. So the scent is caramel. Yang Lang. Lang Lang. Lime, lemon, rose, and essential oils. Ooh, I don't know what that is. There's okay. I'm just sort of pulling things out. Um, oh, she actually used bee wax to put the paper down. Holy shit. Yeah. I love this packaging glass jar recycled paper and she literally has beeswax on there holding it in place is it slimy no not at all it's dried there's nothing on the outside the jar is clean so what is that one this is sugar face and body scrub it is lip safe and it has cane sugar aztec vanilla and coconut oil that's a you thing i feel a lot of this box is going to be a mean thing probably um, i know that there's stuff in there that was made for me though because yes. of my skin dandruff on my face so there is a, his, feel free to name if you like it. It is a cold press soap. It has lard, sodium hydroxide, black, black Brazilian clay, tea tree, fur needles, essential oil, oak barrel essence, and infused oil. And then bourbon, which is in parentheses, pine tar. Okay. And then there is um, a beard oil in here as well. That's called Dangerous Gentleman. Oh, this is just one long. 
This is a salt scrub. Dead Sea Salts. I don't know why when a product has like salt from the Dead Sea in it, it just makes me feel more connected to nature. <laughs> That's probably some bullshit thing in my brain. <laughs> but just hearing Dead Sea, just knowing where it's located and the things connected. So whatever. It has magnesium sulfate, rose oil, rose water, Egyptian granium, coconut oil, cocoa butter, rendered fats, olive oil, castor oil, essential oils for fragrance fragrance and this is a salt scrub i'm gonna use the fuck out of this i'm gonna smell so good after my bath today oh, fuck oh wow let me know how, what you what do you think of that and put my sniffer to the test yeah it looks like it's separated oh holy pudgent too much too much I don't think I, people, for those of you watching, my, my sense of smell is very, very, very strong. Uh, so this is the body, body balm. This is the one with. Why is it in water? Because it, it has coconut oil, essential oils for fragrance, lavender butter. Oh, this might have to be put in the fridge. Yeah, probably would be a good idea to freeze, refrigerate that. Yeah, yeah, because it's not a solid at all. Right, but I'm sure I'd have to mix that. Just shake it. Shake what your mama gave you. Shake it like a Polaroid picture. Two very different songs, but okay. But it works. Yeah. Both works. I love that song. I'm assuming this is something that has to go in the fridge. Yeah, I would probably refrigerate it just to be safe. Okay. And then worst comes to worst, we'll just take it out of there. Okay, so this... That's my soap. Oh, I like how that smells. Is it over pungent? No, it's it, it has that man scent that you like. Oh yeah, that's not bad at all. I really like that. I and you've been doing the um the man squash. Sasquatch. Sasquatch. That's all that's the only soap I use. And I like the bay rum smell, which yeah. is why. I think out of everything, this is my favorite scent. That's got um it does have a little bit of an Irish spring smell to it, which I don't like. But I, I won't get the full effect of that until I lather it up and start using it anyways. Okay. So she said that these are a prototype. Garden and Grim Bar meant to melt away dirt and grease without drying out the skin or otherwise irritating your body. I develop these bars as I'm in the garden often, but also my two boys will not stop doing their own digging, plowing, and messing out in the mud. To protect their skin and my own, this is what we use, but until now we have kept it secret. Let me know what y'all... Let me know how y'all like them. Ooh, I so, feel like I'm privy with, to some family secret. Right. Without without actually using them, the only thing I don't like about what I just smelled is that after scent of that, it Slight. smells like Irish Spring to me. And I know that a lot of men like that. Like, that's a go-to soap for men. I don't like that smell. I would rather use Dove um, than Irish Spring because I don't like that, that Irish Spring scent. Now that you've pointed out it's Irish Spring... Um, that is the only scent my mom used for the longest time. Yeah. And now I hate it. <laughs> it, it probably won't be that bad when it gets lathered because those right. other smells will come out. But I like the, the Bay Rum from Sasquatch, the Dr. Squatch smells. And I like anything that's got tobacco and bourbon scent to it. Uh, so this is the beard oil. Yep. Okay. I'm going to wrap that back up. Put that here. And this is. Fireside massage oil. Mister, I've taken classes. I've actually not taken classes. No. Not then, for massage, no. Then how do you know what you know? Because I have two personal training certifications and I understand the way the muscles work. Mister, I have two <laughs> personal training certification and understand how the muscles work. Yeah. Yeah. I have lots of knowledge. Useless information until it's needed. Is that something you're even interested in using? You just want me to give you a massage. Um, you oiled say, up, yes. You could just say that. I want you to touch my body with it being oiled up, yes. Okay. The oil right. is the specifics. Yeah, I got it. Okay. Got it. So you want me to pay a massage therapist to come out and use that oil? You cock. <laughs> <laughs> I will throw a fit. <laughs> you just said that the oil was the main thing, not me. So just trying to you know, make sure you get the best possible service. That's what she sent a picture of. Yeah. 
<laughs> That's what my invasive thought because <laughs> I moved the paper closer. <laughs> no, <laughs> I got to put it away. <laughs> you should put it away because I'm going to convince you to taste it. <laughs> the instigator of me is be like, how bad could it possibly be? It looks really good, babe. <laughs> I love that. That's the first one I opened. Yeah, don't push me because I'll fucking. Why not? What it'll hurt? She said it's organic. <laughs> it's not gonna taste good though. Um, I love that. That's the first one that I opened because that's what she sent a picture of when she said I'm working on right. it. Brittany, I love that you took the time to do this for us. Thank you. Yeah. I love how everything is so cutely individually wrapped, and she used twine to tie it off. It explains why that box was so damn heavy. Yes, it does. Oh, it's a bee with a gem. That's dope. Are you kidding me? I wonder if she made the mold for that. Is that a man's soap or a woman's soap? I can't tell. It has glitter on it, though, so you're not going to want to use it. it. Nope. It's giving me like fresh cut grass and bathroom cleaner scent. And I know that's not what it's meant to be, but that's what it's giving me. And I'm obsessed. Do you want to sniff it? If you guys watched Harry Potter, you know that episode, not the episode, but um, I can't remember which movie it was in or really what scene it was, but it's when um, they were all making a potion and it appealed to everybody's favorite scent. And one of Hermione's favorite scent was fresh cut grass and she got made fun of for it. And I was like, bitch, I like fresh cut grass. <laughs> like, We that. just got another package. <sighs> I love you guys. I, you know, we're we're now forty minutes into this. Okay. I I think that I think that we're probably over the two hour mark. You just want to end it on a feel good. I think we should end it with the package and not another email. Okay. I'm I'm enjoying this. Okay. This feels like a nice feel good, and if people don't like it, we'll see you on the next podcast. Oh, another black rose. Do you want to sniff any of these? Nope. I'll smell them off podcast because your pleasant and base and my non-pleasant base would clash. Yeah. I don't do scents. Like my I nose know. is so fucking sensitive. She can put on, she can spray perfume on herself, like in the air and walk through it. And it's still pungent to me like six hours afterwards. Yeah. Um, it's bad. It's to the point now I really don't ever wear perfume. You don't have to. I can smell your bath shit on you when you get out of the bath until like the end of the day. Are you serious? It's that That's bad. That's crazy. Yep. You can be on the back porch medicating. Yeah. And I can be in the house and smell that. No bullshit. Do you want me to go behind the tree? <laughs> no. 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 I, I feel bad knowing that. I can smell it. I right. guarantee you nobody else in the house is going to come in and smell you smoking on the back porch. Right. Knowing, though, that you're sitting in here working on something and you can smell it. Right. I don't want it to be distracting it, or right. a bother. Yeah, it's all right. I have no problem sitting under the tree to do that. I love the little bee molds. Yeah. It also gives a hint of mintiness. Yeah, we should, if we end up working with her, the bee thing should be your, your, like, you should have, My her, look. have her create a signature bee for you. Yeah. If I were to do a bee one, I would want it to smell like. No, I meant just the brand. Oh, like the bee brand thing? Okay. Right. We could, we could have Jeff design a, a bee for you as a logo of some sort. Oh, I like how that looks. That's pretty cool. That's probably a hem soap. I think it is. Is there glitter on it? Fireside massage oil. No, there is no soap on it. No glitter on it? No, no glitter on it. All right, can I see it? Um, so that's, there's a his and her, because these are the only cold pressed bars of soap. If I can fucking, that's on there. Good. Um, that might have been like a powder that she put on there to keep it from sticking or something. Yeah, I don't know. That I think that's that, I think that's a you fragrance. I don't yeah. think that's a me fragrance. Uh, let's see. I want to make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay. So if that one's mine, that has cranberry fig, rose, and Egyptian cotton. Yeah, that one's yours because that was rose smell that I was. I had to blow my nose. Oh yeah, this is definitely your soap. Oh, that's really pretty on top. There's glitter on it. Oh, no. And it's a hem, hem bar? Yeah. It Are has you like sure a, that's mine? If it's, it's a blue shimmery. 
That one has. Is that glitter or is it just? It's like a um, a shimmering powder that's placed on top. That one actually doesn't have a strong scent, but. Um, so I'm assuming this is the one that's yours. Maybe. I think the red and black one was supposed to be mine, but it don't matter. She'll see this and, and message us, I'm sure. Okay. So the only one I've left out is the body balm. I'm very excited for this. I'm excited to use this little soap on the kids because they just love dirt. <laughs> Our daughter will bring me a plate with loose dirt on it and say, I made you cookies. <laughs> and I'm just dirt everywhere. So I am excited for that. I'm also excited for this massage oil from whomever you get to massage me. We actually have a massage table in a closet. We do. Well, that turned into 45 minutes of stuff. Yeah, it did. And I did not expect that. It'll be a short episode for everyone who was, I guess maybe they weren't, the people who don't see the product. Should we even put that in the podcast? Should I film like a, a little clip saying, hey guys, the rest of this podcast is better, better watch visually go to YouTube? Maybe, yeah. All right. Well, let's wrap up okay. and then I'll add that and then I'll cut it and paste it at okay. the beginning of that. So <clears throat> have anything else you want to talk about? Yes, but it's not for this. <laughs> okay. Um, we are about to go down a Patreon rabbit hole for the next few videos. Today is um, Saturday, July 29th. And the entire day today has been dedicated to the podcast. So we have... This is our second filming. It's two o'clock in the afternoon and we're about to spend probably the next six hours recording and we have lots of content to be going through. So if you guys are not subscribed to the Patreon channel, you should probably look into that if you would like more content that is not just email related. We do vlogs, um, personalized content, unboxings, that is, right? Unboxings, things that are just more yeah. lifestyle shit. That's mm -hmm. us. Um, if you sign up to the $15 tier it'll, or higher, it'll get you into our discord, which is a very pop in community. Like it's very, over a thousand people now. Yeah. And there are people making massive life changes in there. I'm glad that you said that about the thousand people. I want to see what my poll is up to. Oh, okay. What so do you while you're doing at? that, the poll yep. of many, the t-shirts, yeah. how oh. many people liked it? Yep. I'm going to say 138. 160. Oh, wow. That's one yep. of a lot. So what the poll is, is I asked her, I and then I asked Discord after her, if you think that we should reprint the accountability shirts with the word accountability in different colors, so the red ones are a standalone limited run. No one will ever get those again. Mm -hmm. And then we could do like a pink one or, you know, a black on black. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which I think would be kind of cool. That would be cool. Um, And and I did a thumbs up for a yes or a thumbs down for no. And out of, and it's, it's all yes. Everybody's on board with it. Nobody said that they would be offended if we reposted something that we were going to do as a limited run. Okay. So now I have to contact Jordan. I have to order more shirts because we blew through the last thousand shirts we ordered. Um, I need to have him order the t-shirts and the hoodies because I'm doing those Carhartt hoodies. Did I show you that I redid the burn the flag thing? No. I removed the badge for sacred and put the chess pieces in the center of it. I posted it to Discord, but we haven't been in Discord. I did it right before we left. Okay. Um, I think that I'm going to do a prioritize, execute, and burn the fucking chips hoodie. I mean, I've had a lot of people wanting those. Okay. So I would just, wear that hoodie. I, I mean, I would too. I'd wear the shit out of that. Yeah. Um, any, anything else? Should we just wrap this up? Because otherwise we're just going to keep talking. Um, no, I can't think of anything else. Okay. With that being said, guys, remember you are the authors of your own life. So grab a pen. And we'll see you on the next one. Bye, guys.